All right, in this video, I wanted to discuss some of the um, theoretical and practical aspects of changing the sampling rate of a signal. And we've been doing this some in our class, and we're going to need to do it more when we start looking at our software defined radio project. All right, so what I wanted to do here is give you an idea of what's going on with the resampling function in MATLAB. Uh, this is a common DSP technique that MATLAB can, can implement. And if you look at the resample function in MATLAB, it actually has many more options than this, but this is the one that uh, is most commonly used. Okay, so <clears throat> what happens in MATLAB is there's essentially three processing blocks. Yeah. All right, the first one is to upsample by L, and then low pass filter, and then downsample by M. And we'll talk about all these all these steps. Okay, so uh, let's get started. I wanted to illustrate this by drawing a signal. All right, so let's say this is the signal that we're sampling. All right, so it's just wiggling along. And let's make it always positive. It doesn't have to be, but it's easier to draw if it's always positive. Okay, and what I want to do is draw pictures of upsampling by three and then downsampling by two. Okay, so for example, if we had speech sampled at 8,000 samples per second, if I change that and I upsampled by L equal three and then downsampled by M equal two, I would get an overall sampling rate of 8K times 3 divided by 2, which would be 12 kilosamples per second. Okay, so we're going to illustrate this with a drawing. All right, so let's say in light blue that we have our original 8K sampling rate. So I'm going to draw stems for that. And every third point on the grid I'm going to take as a sample. Okay, so 1, 2, 3. And so forth and so on. So this is a picture of the original sampling rate FS1. Alright, and I want to make copies as I go so I'm going to add things to it and just reproduce this graph at each step of the way. Alright, so the first thing is this upsampling and it turns out that the way we upsample is we simply insert zeros between samples. All right, so if I'm going to upsample by a factor of three, I would insert zeros, two zeros between every sample. Okay, so I model that with drawing the zeros in, so I'm inserting zeros. Okay, so this block would be sample by three. I have now three times as much data. Okay, so next step. The next step is the low pass filter and actually the low pass filter has two roles. It's going to um, interpolate after the upsampling step but then it also has the possibility of um, serving as an anti-aliasing filter. All right, so that would be more important if we're actually changing the sampling rate down, you know, from 8,000 to say 6,000, then there would be the possibility of aliasing. When you're going up the low pass filter, the function is to primarily interpolate. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm going to reproduce this. I'm going to line up the axis and the interpolation step simply means that, okay, we'll do this in green, that the low pass filter is taking this signal that had, you know, the inserted zeros, running it through a digital filter, and essentially filling in the gaps. It's interpolating what the signal value would be between the samples. And based on sampling theory, it actually, you know, in practice gets it pretty close to right. 
All right, if this is a band limited signal, it would interpolate correctly between the samples and form a new set of digital data, which is illustrated by the green stems. All right, so here is my upsampled signal. Okay. All right, so I'm going to upsampled. It's a two-step process. You insert the zeros, then you filter to get the upsampled signal. All right. So from here, I'm going to copy this again. And I'm going to downsample. All right, so the next block was to simply downsample. So we line this up. I'm going to go with red here. All right. In this particular case, we are going to downsample by two. So we simply take every other sample. All right, so that would be my downsampled signal. And of course, at that point, the green stems would be gone, so I can erase those. All right, and then this is my new signal as I've gone through this resampling process. Okay, so let's compare that new signal to the old signal. All right, move this out of the way. All right, so we've, if we compare the new signal that we formed to the original signal, here's the original signal. I'll copy that, paste it, and you see I can line this up, and I'm still getting samples from the original waveform. They're just not at the same rate. Okay, I get a little, you know, more red samples than I do blue stems, red stems out number of the blue stems because I've changed this overall sampling rate. Okay, so that's the original and the data in the red would be the uh, resampled data. All right, so what we need to keep in mind as we go through our little software defined radio project is that when we do this resampling, there is that low pass filter step in the middle. All right, the low pass filter serves two roles. It serves as a um, interpolator and it also serves as an anti-aliasing filter. There are times when we don't want that anti-aliasing filter to kick in. All right, so sometimes we just will we'll simply have a signal and we will downsample it without the filtering step. And if we downsample without filtering, there's no anti-aliasing that gets performed.